The Power of Visual Storytelling Through Staged Photography, an essay on the work of Gregory Crudson. In this essay, I aim to address the questions. Is the staged, surreal photography of Gregory Crudson considered important in a psychosocial context? Can we be dis disillusioned with reality and thus desire to create our own reality? Can staged photography help us to integrate our dual natures as humans and in doing so create psychological balance? American photographer best known for staging cinematic scenes of suburbia to dramatic effect. Theatrical stories centred on people and themes that surround identity and intimacy issues. Since the 1970s, photographic images have become self-consciously theatrical, utilising devices that would make viewers aware of the staging of subjects and objects before the camera. The use of cinematic and theatrical effects has led to the rise of a new genre in art photography in which the self-conscious strategies free artists from the burden of photographic truth that defined the previous era. According to Laurie Pauly, these tableaux use theatricality as a device to reflect on social experience. A curator from Whitney Museum of American Art, Chrissy Isles, says Crudson has shifted the language of photography significantly in the last decade, a narrative which goes far enough to place this character in a plausible situation in which we could all see ourselves that leaves us to resolve the story from our own experience, or perhaps from memories or dreams. Crudson talks of being heavily influenced by the works of both Diane Arbus and Walker Evans. He was introduced to the work of Arbus by his father while still a child. I can see that Crudson shares a similar aesthetic to both photographers here, capturing the stony faces which portray the disconnect and isolation of his subjects. This, I think, is likely to be due, in part, to the fact that Evans was said to be from a very wealthy background. Walker Evans documented the American vernacular of mostly poor rural farmers for years, but his own life was very different from the subjects he photographed. A full production cinema experience for a single photograph which can consist of a thousand inam inanimate objects, which seem like characters unto themselves. The viewer is invited to investigate and search for meaning and resonance within the image, probably to occupy a sense of relatedness with the experience or an empathy for the character. The large scale of these photographic works becomes significant in terms of engaging the viewer. As Jean-Francois Chevrier explains, they are designed and produced for the wall, summoning a confrontational experience on the part of the spectator that sharply contrasts with the habitual processes of appropriation and projection whereby photographic images are normally received and consumed. When referring to the work of Walker Evans, Crudson identifies with the same kind of objective, to capture a perfect facade which sets the scene by which a deeper truth comes through, revealing a conflict or paradox within the image. This then evokes the question, what happened, or what is about to happen? This makes the work of Gregory Crudson intriguing and interactive. Crudson's father was a psychoanalyst, and this intrigued Crudson, who would try to listen in on, on sessions through the floorboards when a child. The untitled, untitled image featured here is a visual representation of this experience. My work is a play on psychological mirrors, says Crudson. Though Crudson notes Edward Hopper as an influence, I think where Crudson's work departs from this particular painting is a lack of details within the environment. As Edward Hopper matured, he left more and more visual detail out of his paintings and focused on the psychological reality of his subjects. I think this bears a striking resemblance to the uncanny stark expressions and composition in Crudson's photographic work. I can definitely see the influence of this painting in Gregory Crudson's work. In this painting, the subject is attending to private affairs in her apartment. The anonymous woman in night windows is unaware of any viewer's gaze. The painting exposes the voyeuristic opportunities of the modern American city and the contradiction it offers between access to the intimate lives of strangers and urban loneliness and isolation. Since the 1980s, photography has become a sort of reflective mirror that reveals the nature of contemporary representation. Within this context, the best work is that which is capable of reaching beyond its own artifice and showing itself as relevant to social circumstances. Joan Font Kerbeter writes, Today, however, the real merges with fiction and photography can close a cycle. 
return the illusory and prejudice to the plots of the symbolic that are generally in the end the actual hotbeds where the interpretation of our existence is cooked, that is the production of reality. Through simulations we consume experience and in the case of stage photography it is possible to acquire experiences and develop emotions and thought. The hyperconsumption society raises a set of myths, dreams and imaginary that offer an alternative world to a hopeless present. In this sense, simulations can be ways to happiness as they encourage to renew the elements of our insistence on changing life, proposing new perspectives and some sort of alternative consumption.